friends uh, hi again I'm uh, gonna discuss today a spurious, reg spurious regression or how you can uh, uh, produce a lot of nonsense uh, BS uh, people with statistical concepts particularly if you're a psychologist this time it's a little more sinister than usual because we're discussing uh, the stereotyping of people based on their physical characteristics uh, something that is extremely reminiscent of craniometry uh, Lombroso's work you know where we can really preventively uh, arrest people based on their attributes uh, and, and of course even if some general characteristics for a population exist you have a huge sampling error when you select individuals from it so i think it's just racism racism even, even if, i mean of course uh the lot of anthropologists say that there are no real differences between people that the, the, even if they were you cannot find you have high variance it has to be uh, uh off of low variance between individuals like identical individuals drawn from the same population which of course doesn't exist so this is another of the bogus work that's fueling a lot of these uh, racist and, uh, theories produced by psychologists under cover of science. Look, I'm doing science. That's what the science says. I'm like Galileo. You're misreading me because uh, you're not, uh, you're punishing me for really showing the truth. So uh, continues, of course, my, some of my work on IQ. So this is very simple. We're going to, very simple example. You don't need to know a lot of math to understand the uh, story. So a fellow called Nicolas Beaumont uh, had written a paper with his colleagues. Uh, and, and of course, there's a class of other people also um, involved in, in that kind of uh, sinister game, finding links between trustworthiness um, uh, of individuals and, and, uh, and their facial characteristics. So let's forget about the content and focus on statistics. Look at the clouds they have here this is say variable x variable y and they draw a regression line so here 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 here, here they have regression lines but look at the crowd if you didn't have a regression line you probably wouldn't believe the story <laughs> but they put a regression line because they always put a regression line there are a lot of methods to figure out how fragile this uh, nonsense is one of them is to see how many points you need to flip the regression line from positive to negative uh, slope or um, uh, the technique here I use uh, would, you know, the sort of like what I've always uh, relied on is generating a Monte Carlo, something completely random, and then uh, asking people, you know, uh, you see a difference between uh, the set of graphs above and that set below. So let, let's look at uh, how you can generate a random regression line. You generate one more random. Uh, you look here, you have big regression line, big regression line. This is totally random, huh? And, uh, and of course, the scale here, ignore the scale because it's between, if I can even make it, if I, you know, make it more pronounced, if I have the scale covering a, a narrower set of standard deviations. So look above, look below. So basically, you can basically uh, fool a lot of people by hacking the regression. In other words, you look at 10 different sets of uh, X and Y variables and then pick the best. And then you write a paper. And of course, uh, if, if, if your uh, uh, referees are psychologists, uh, odds are they're not gonna get it. So they're gonna see a number like regression and go by it. Now, uh, let me do some math here. And uh, it looks, I don't know if it's in literature, I can find it, but you never know. And, and let's get technical from here down. Uh, what is the standard error <laughs> on a regression coefficient? So we make it very simple. You say, you, you make it, uh, you look at the beta, y equals beta x, <laughs> and both normalized, and we ignore the, any additional uh, components. Then, of course, we're going to have a variable that you observe, which is going to be the, the sample covariance between x and y, over the, the variance of y or the sample covariance between x and y or variance of x since they're all normalized. So let, we pick one. <coughs> and, and I discovered, the, I pulled out the distribution, okay. And the variance, which is uh, rapidly normal. So this above can be, would say n is above uh, 50, 60, 70 uh, number of points. You can substitute to a normal. 
Now, how did I do that? It's very uh, well, simply, I assumed that the numerator, which is uh, the covariance and the variance of y are uh, independent. And, and effectively, there is a, a quite a, a convincing argument that they're independent. <laughs> Just did Monte Carlo before doing the theorems and, and I came up uh, after, uh, uh, you know, uh, like uh, a little bit of uh, walking and, and and a little bit of uh, math that came up with this here, and which is, is going to be published elsewhere. So the derivation, we assume that they're uncorrelated or independent, but since we're talking about uh, uh, sort of Gaussian variables, we can, they're about the same. Uh, we know that xy follows a variance gamma distribution, actually not very well known. <laughs> Dilip Madan, uh, who was mass finance, discovered that variance gamma distribution. It was a special case of some other distribution. Um, and, and parameterized n over 2. And then, of course, the numerator is, uh, the denominator is, as everyone knows, a chi-square distribution, which is uh, that standard. Now you want to see the, figure out the distribution of a variance gamma, a sum of variance gamma, over a sum of chi-square distributed variable. So the, the, the product of two normalized ga uh, Gaussian, as I showed, I, I, I pulled out the characteristic function, okay? And, uh, and once you pull out the characteristic function, the proof here is that uh, you take z, which is uh, x minus y, x plus y, because if x is not Gaussian and y is Gaussian, x minus y would be a Gaussian variable, and s plus y would be a Gaussian variable, and they're both going to be independent. And from that, you get x squared minus y squared, which is basically the difference between two chi squares. And that gives us a characteristic function, um, you know, to work, easy to work with. Uh, it's, of course, that you discover the variance gamma distribution, but also uh, the sum is, stays within the, the, that distribution. Uh, because visibly the sum is the uh, the, the, the sum is you, you, in other words you you multiply uh, the characteristic function to sum a random variable is going to be that of a, a variance gamma distribution and over to it's very simple that that part is simple uh, a little bit of uh, homework <laughs> you know, uh, heavy and you pull out the distribution of of, of that ratio. Uh, now the equation above is uh, quite fragile. Be, be, be you get a if you can rederive it for a specific n. You get very precise numbers. If you use this one, you got to take the limit. Uh, instead of put, plugging in an n here, you got to take the limit of this uh, heading towards that. So, let me uh, summarize. Uh, the regressions produce a lot of noise. That's uh, stay in dimension one. When you go in high dimension, there's another problem. <laughs> produce a lot of noise. Never look at the numbers, just look at the graph. <laughs> the graph, your eyes won't lie. I mean, they may lie somewhere, but not here. <laughs> and uh, good luck in debunking uh, more uh, nonsense by the, what I call that sinister racial psychologist program uh, that is very active in the IQ domain and other characteristics. Thank you.